shell, and everyone will get a small chunk of metal. The lethal radius for uh, splinters and chunks from that fragmentation grenade is at least 40 yards. So it's a very potent bit of kit. Normally, you'd poke your head out of a trench, <laughs> fling that grenade, duck back down again, and everything above ground within uh, 35 to 40 yards will get a small piece of a red-hot shrapnel in the form of that fragmentation. So it's a very effective weapon indeed. Now, our airborne infantryman, our paratrooper there, is going to demonstrate it in action, and you can see that we have a small sandbag grenade pit for him to use. So let's see what he can do with our uh, pineapple grenade, our high-explosive fragmentation grenade. He'll run forward, he'll then pull the pin. He's crawling forward, this is good. He pulls the pin, he lets go of the trigger lever. We've been decked out in German uniforms to provide a more realistic foe for our agents to practice against a bit later on when we have a full-blooded battle test exercise at 3 o'clock. This weapon is initiated by unscrewing the base of the wooden stick handle and a small string should then drop out. Shaking it out, there is a ring on the end of that. Pulling that ring will initiate the fuse, giving our grenadier some few seconds in which to lob the grenade and then fall flat on his face to avoid the high explosive concussive wave that will pass over his helmeted head. He will be using the same grenade bunker, the masher. <coughs> And another extremely effective method of delivering high explosives to the enemy. Now the chemical reaction is taking place. The phosphorus is beginning to burn, and large quantities of white smoke are being produced. Normally, you'd wait a few seconds, and very soon a dense bank of fog would build up. As I say, allowing you to hide, move forward unseen, or retreat unseen. A useful tactic, and again, white phosphorus smoke like this can be delivered by mortars and artillery pieces, as well as in hand grenades. One man, the loader at the rear, will insert one of the uh, 2.36 inch rockets into the rear of the bazooka tube, and the man holding the tube will then initiate it after aiming on the target and ensuring he is about to hit it. Now, bazooka is certainly something of an odd name. Some of you may have heard of the jazz aficionado, the saxophonist, Bazooka Joe. Well, he's, uh, he's an American musician who's famous for an enormous and rather odd-shaped saxophone that he plays. When asked what kind of saxophone it was, he said, it's my bazooka. And therefore, with this unusually shaped weapon, we take the name of the unusual saxophone, and it became known as the uh, bazooka in the common vernacular of the American soldier. Now then, very effective, as I say, against armoured targets and bunkers. Let's see what our American soldiers can do with the bazooka. The rocket goes in, is wired up, and we're ready. And with a streak of fire, the rocket shoots down to its target. To the rear are firing a larger German piece, the eight centimetre Minen, uh, a granata therefor, I should say, which means literally grenade thrower although these bombs are considerably bigger than the hand grenades you saw in action a moment ago. The range of these weapons, obviously the 8 cm one has a far greater range, but several hundred yards easily. Today, of course, we are cranking the weapons right up and ensuring that the, uh, the shells will be lobbed almost vertically to keep the uh, explosions here in this arena. Therefore, we are operating at the most extreme short range possible. Normally, as I say, even the 60mm uh, mortar will be able to reach out to about 600 yards. Now, a small wager, I believe, has taken place between these two crews to see who can hit the target first. You'll notice, immediately to your front, a green post with a white flag attached to it. The, flag, the uh, post is not surrendering, it's not showing the white flag just yet, but it might wish to do so because in a few moments, high explosive will rain down all about it. And the first... Uh, Mortar crew to knock down that post will be declared the winners. So we'll see what they can do and how many rounds it takes to actually achieve their target. <laughs> so, gentlemen, if I could ask the, uh, the Americans to begin first. They are our guests here. We'll let them have the first shot. Up, up she goes, high into the wild blue yonder, reaching the peak of its arc. Down it comes. 
Well, a little bit beyond the target. Pretty close. Now to turn the home guards in their German uniform to see what they can do with the Granata Werfer. Again, you'll see there the Did you see it go up? Down the muzzle of the tube. It falls down the tube, is initiated, and out it goes. Again, high up into the sky, a little bit higher this time for the bigger mortar. Down she comes. Well, they're not, nothing if not consistent, just as badly uh, off. Now, they're still a little bit beyond the target, although better off for a straight line. Now, the Germans there are yeah. hanged off and making their adjustments. Here's their second shot. Oh, up it goes. Rubbish. And down. All closer still, very well done, but not quite on the target. Americans are going to hit it. Now let's see, a third mm -hmm. shot for the Americans. Surely they can be on target this time. Up it goes. Yeah, I can see it against away. the clouds. Down it comes. Very close indeed, very close indeed. <laughs> Although the mortar commander there is still not entirely happy with his crew. Let's see what the home guards we can do. I think they've been listening in to the uh, range correction by the Americans. Up it goes. That's a bit. And they've got it. What weapon will she use against the sentry? Uh, it seems it'll be her womanly wild. She is merely part of a two-person uh, two team. Oh, look, she's she over is there, involved look. in distracting the sentry, enabling her colleague to put the high explosive at the base of the flagpole. Unreeling his wire. He'll be ready to detonate that. He's now signalling to his colleague. Ooh. Fritz is getting a little bit forward in his advances there. But luckily, she's now received the signal from her colleague that she can break contact and say, Auf Wiedersehen. No uncertain terms there with a slap around the face. To our German sentry. And the stage is now set. What will happen? You might get pulled along a bit. They're just making sure there's enough wind to do what they want to do. Look, so you get some air in it. It's quite a big parachute there. People are going to have to move quite quickly. Well, there he goes. <laughs> 